Good morning, traders. Welcome back to another episode of Trade Delicious TV. It's a Monday morning, in fact, a bank holiday Monday in the UK. So markets might be a little bit quiet and sideways, but we'll do our best to cover upcoming news events for the week. We'll cover things like psychology, risk management. We'll share and show a couple of strategies as we're attempting to find some live trades in uh, around about sort of 15, 20 minutes from now. But I'm your host, Rich, all the way from the UK, and David, all the way from America. How did your weekend been, sir? Uh, the weekend was fantastic. Uh, Easter weekend for me is uh, typically pretty busy, um, and uh, this uh, this Easter weekend lived up to the hype in terms of how busy I was. It was my first attempt at cooking a leg of lamb. Now, I bought a boneless one because I didn't really want to feel like dealing with the bones, Um marinated it in like a white wine and rosemary uh, brine, uh, and it turned out really well. Uh, grilled it for a couple hours. Uh, I was nervous because little kids, we had a couple little kids over, like they, they're not typically in the lamb. It's a little bit gamey for them. Um, and then I made a little like a, like a, like a chimichurri, like a mint, a lemon, honey, uh, chimichurri, a little garlic in there, and it turned out well. Everybody was uh, uh, really, really happy. Um, we tend to have like we tend to like lose our minds uh, in a good way uh, when it comes to like hosting parties and stuff like that. And so we were looking forward to kind of hosting some folks at our home. And then yeah, we had a wonderful weekend, one wonderful Easter dinner. Um, you know, U.S. markets were closed on Friday, right? And then we did we did have a number print uh, on the dollar. Um, you know, uh, and I haven't even looked at it because I was like, it's Good Friday. I'm not trading. I'm not trading U.S. markets because equity markets were closed. So I had a nice long weekend um, and then looking forward to getting into the trading, which which really for me, I mean, it'll start today, but maybe in reality, it'll really, really kick off tomorrow. OK, OK. Did you, you did you catch any of the stream on Friday? On Friday, I, I caught a bit okay, and then okay. it was just like in between. But it was like literally like in between uh, catch a bit of the stream. And then like my plate was just like. So yeah. full, you know, my daughter had a phone crisis this weekend, which really wasn't a phone crisis. She <laughs> thought she broke her phone. She didn't break her phone. I said, it seems to be working just fine. And she's like, okay. I know, but like, and she was just like freaking out. She thought I was just going to lose my mind over her breaking her phone. I'm like, is it, you're fine. It's an, it was an accident, but um, no, I didn't manage to catch a lot of the stream on Friday. I know, uh, based off of <laughs> my last appearance on the stream that we were kind of uh, uh, escalating a little bit on the trade, the likes, and we were moving up, 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 up. And I was just, <laughs> I was excited to see, you know, um, and one of the important things about the trade, the likes, if you guys don't know or aren't familiar, uh -huh. um, yes. you know, is like this kind of, this kind of draws on our account management a little bit with that specific account. Because the other thing is, is like, say, for example, you had a losing trade on an elevated trade, the likes trade. Well, then all of a sudden we got to size back down mm -hmm. um, and we can't, um, you know, take this the way you will, but we can't revenge. We can't revenge <laughs> trend effectively on the trade, the likes account if we can't keep those likes up. So, yeah. I mean, you guys have my permission. I'm sure you have Rich's permission to go ahead and hit that like button so that we could see how high we can get that thing and see what kind of trades we could place on it. Um, let, but, let me yeah. just hop in quickly, just um, explain what happened on Friday. So I was joined on the stream by Anna FX. If you guys haven't heard of Anna FX, go ahead and check out her YouTube channel. She's a fantastic trader. She joined us on the stream on Friday. Now, whenever Anna and I get together, we never have the same bias. I think I was short EU and she was long EU. It was either EU or GU. And for those of you who haven't followed the stream so much, appreciate we've got quite a new audience in today. So we're currently running 10 for 10 days in profitability. So all of last week, we hit a green day every single day. And all of the week before we hit a green day every single day. We do this live on stream every single day. We're trading here Monday to Friday. So for the last 10 days, we've managed to have a green day day but on friday last week it was a bank holiday 
So my job as a trader, and what, what David's saying is we're doing this thing called trade the likes. So for every person that hits this like button, I increase my position size by $10,000. So we hear, I can't remember exactly what it is on Thursday, but coming into Friday, I trade the previous day's likes. So for an example, on Friday, we hit 31 likes. So today I'm going to be trading 3.1 lots. Now, my job on Friday was to trade 3.1 lots and manage my risk around it, but the markets weren't moving. So my promise to you guys is if you keep turning up, keep hitting that like button, I'm going to keep increasing my risk size. And we could end up easily five, six, seven, eight, nine, even a dozen lots, if not higher. And I promise I will not stop. And I'm going to do my best to manage risk. But the markets were not moving on the Friday. So I had to put on this trade and I managed to catch, I mean, the market was in such a small range. I managed to catch just two pips. And Anna was like, that's not a win, two pips. How can you call that? And I was like, Anna, win's a win. But we sat in the market for 20 minutes and it just went sideways. Probably didn't even move more than three pips. And then ultimately I managed to get out and the market rolled over and then went in her direction. So, um, yeah, we do. Uh, that, that was Friday's stream. It was a lot of fun. Um, we're going to look at the markets today, see if we can make that 11 for 11 green day. I really wish it was a normal trading day because um, that's where my edge comes from. Kind of OK, looking at the markets and, you know, taking taking bigger moves out of the markets. But when it goes sideways, spreads open up as well. So it gets a little bit more expensive to trade. But I'm curious, who have we got in chat? Who's uh, for all of you who are new to our audience? Welcome over to Trade Delicious. Um, how's your weekends? Are you trading today? Tell us what you trade. I'm a forex trader. Dave is a stock trader. Um, mostly, I'm trading Euro USD and GBP USD. I do trade the DAX, but the DAX market looks to be closed today. So, tell us, tell us what you're trading. Tell us if you're if you're going to be involved in the market today. We'll pull up a live trading floor. Um, shortly, and we'll be giving away an account from our sponsors, the 5%, a little bit later on in the stream as well. So uh, let's pull this up and see if we can get a see if we can get a news calendar. So let's hop straight in it. We can uh, we need well, it <laughs> it's, it's bank holidays. <laughs> yeah. I'm like looking at this, I'm like, oh, okay, well, uh, not only uh, uh, bank holiday over there in the UK, but you, you've got uh, most of Europe on bank holiday. Mm, we've got ISM service manufacturing PMI. Sorry, ISM manufacturing PMI. This is interesting because we've got bank holiday in the UK or across mm -hmm. Europe, yet we've got a red news folder on the USD. I'm wondering just how much this is going to move currency pairs a little bit later on today. I mean, this is, this is the only thing that I think us as traders have really got to be mindful of today. And I was scanning this. And I was like, okay, what do we got tomorrow? I was like, mm, not sort of, not, yeah, you know, we got we got the Joel's job opening. I was like, okay. Then we got the ISM service PMI. And then we roll over into obviously unemployment claims, but the big one on the Friday, the non farm employment change and unemployment rate as well. So this could be an interesting one that the market might be prepping for something a bit bigger this week. Uh, yeah. What is, what does this tell you for your trading week? Are you cautious, sort of coming into Friday? Or are you just like I'm just going to trade? Uh, no, so no, I, I think it's a combination of the two. Uh, again, we had a number uh, last Friday as well, right? And markets were closed. Futures markets were open in the U.S. for a little bit, but in terms of the mm -hmm. equity markets, they were closed. Um, today, I suspect that there there will be uh, obviously uh, a little bit more in the activity but i think it may be short-lived but like every week this week we're going to get a reaction uh at or around that time um and so i i think in preparation for this week um and and you know you take this all the way back uh in terms of how i view the markets and my my from my prism uh we're talking about uh we had the fed the fed decision on the interest rate the interest rate decision was no surprise right uh and then we move on and we say okay we're not really sure we need some more data prints, right? You would have thought that that reaction would have seen some continuation in U.S. markets, uh, and that those would have continued to uh, uh, to move higher, uh, more definitively. And it's kind of fought to continue to do that, even though the Fed was a bit more dovish than usual. Um, mm -hmm. 
that I think we're just waiting to get some number prints that would confirm that we are in the U.S. going to start seeing those rate cuts uh, before we can kind of take the market higher. Um, and so the market is now saying, OK, uh, institutions or retail traders or what have you, people in the markets are now saying, I need to see it more so in the numbers. And we continue to see strong jump, strong jump numbers in the in the U.S. in terms of like the uh, uh, we're not getting that uh, those unemployment uh, unemployment claims rising. Um, mm -hmm. And we're still we're still seeing some pockets of inflation that are a little bit stickier than 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 a lot of people uh, would like here in the U.S. Um, and we're coming into the seasonal time where fuel tends to get more expensive uh, here in the U.S. Uh, you know, and so like we, we can, if we see oil prices rise, what does that do for consumer demand in other areas yeah. of the economy? So, you know, there's a lot of competing factors in terms of like where we could be versus where we would like to be. Um mm -hmm. And I don't really think that we're going to see anything more definitive till we get closer to that June meeting. So I think the markets are just a little bit nervous. So, I, yeah, uh, the the runners, if you will, um, will happen close, uh, if not during those FOMC meetings. Um, I'm going to be looking at individual stock catalysts. But like as far as the index moving as a whole, it's probably going to trade in a tight range, in a tight range, experience the move for the day and then move to the next day instead of getting that increased volatility that we all love so much yeah yeah no good point i was just reading chat actually long crypto by the dip i did check the markets a little bit earlier on before we came onto the stream and we did we have got a we have got a sell-off nearly two percent today on uh on bitcoin not something i typically hold something i i um sorry something i hold but not something i trade i've charted it up um, back tested it. I could probably do it profitably. I can't be everywhere. I'd rather do a, a really refined job with just a couple of assets than I would try and spread myself a little bit too thin. Uh, let me say, I was in a GU long at the moment, wondering how that's going. Sasquatch saying staying out of the markets at the moment. Barry, 28 likes so far. You're in trouble, Rich. Uh, not trading as clocks move. I'm still asleep. Uh, it's US. <laughs> I, I want to touch on this. So it's US bank holiday. Why would you trade FX? This is a very, very valid point. My edge mm -hmm. in the FX market comes from when the markets are typically moving in normal sessions. And that's not really present when it comes to the uh, bank holidays. Now, as part of what we're doing on stream, I guarantee that I will trade one position and manage risk around that. Maybe a small position. I might have to manage risk quite tight. But typically, my edge comes from normal trading days where we don't have bank holidays. And this is why on Friday, I found it such a struggle just to get a small move in the market. Remember, all the trades that we take on screen, they're going to be for educational purposes Oh no, they're edged. Wait, I've said this back to front, David. Help me out here while I pull up the disclaimer. It is there we for go. there we go. There's a disclaimer. So it is for I'm still I still can't get this right. It's for edu educational purposes only. Educational purposes. That's it. My, it's Monday morning. Give me a it was a long weekend. But it's um, even yeah. earlier Monday for me. I I should be struggling to get those things out. But absolutely, yeah. You guys uh trade your own book. Um, you know, honestly, mm -hmm. if you're saying, hey, today my edge isn't in the market, it's not volatile, uh, I don't like to spread, whatever, what have you, whatever, however you trade these markets, if you don't see a trade in there, cash is always a position, right? And so we always talk this all the time to make sure that, uh, yes, we agree. Um, you know, if you're sitting on cash and you don't see your edge in the markets, don't trade it. And there's nothing, yeah. there, there, there is nothing against that because the market will be open tomorrow and there'll be, there'll be an opportunity. Um, and you know, you can you can use today to kind of ease into the week a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, if if uh, obviously uh, it's a bank holiday, that means it's a holiday for a reason there uh, over there in Europe. And so, like, you just kind of ease into the week and just, uh, you know, take your days off when the market gives them to you. Right. Um, I, I am big on that. And that's why Friday I didn't even look at charts. Right. U.S. markets were closed. Yeah. So I was like, OK, this is the time. Let me grab this honey do list. Let me figure out. What yeah. my partner needs me to do around the house. Let me make sure I've got things taken care of for the weekend. Um, and then, you know, just relax. Right. And then we, we come back into the markets just that much more invigorated, being able to go ahead and take advantage when the opportunities are truly there versus trying to manufacture opportunities uh, just for the sake of being at your desk and, and trading. You know, I think we all go through that phase sometimes. Right. Where we're just going to sit at the desk 
for 14 hours a day. We're going to take charts and then we're going to reduce the time frame. So you're looking at a 15 second chart to display the volatility <laughs> you're looking for. And then you turn into some sort of like uh, uh, some sort of algo trader. Right. And you're yeah, just like, yeah. yeah, I can execute on this. And then all of a sudden you're tired and you're unprofitable. Bad that place was, to that be. was my first two years of trading. I literally sat there 15 hours a day watching charts like I, I, I need to click buy and sell. I need to click buy and sell. Been doing this full time now for close to six years. Um, took me two years to become profitable. And as David is touching on, it's knowing when to not trade. Where is your edge present? My edge isn't present on bank holidays. I know it's not present on bank holidays. My edge is present when the markets are moving, when I understand price movement. Typically, that's not trading small ranges as well. Um, best behavior, David. I've just noticed that the boss is in the chat. Good morning, Jordan. How are you doing? So, I want to touch on over the weekend, I've done my weekly review. Now, for those of you who are not aware, a weekly review is an opportunity where it's like a daily ASR, advanced self-review. It's where you take a moment when the markets are closed typically, and there's not so much moving components to your day. And you say, I'm going to spend maybe 30 minutes, maybe an hour, maybe two hours. Mine takes me around about an hour. And what I do is I go through my accounts and my activity through the whole week. I reach out up my trades, I look at my journal notes, and I just spend some time meditating and journaling around my activity. And David, you've heard me say it for a little while now. So for three months, I've been forward testing my discretional plays. So for the longest time, I'm a pattern trader. And typically what I'm looking for is market structure to move in a certain way that I can create a pattern. It's very, very mechanical. It's very rules-based. If 99 people, sorry, if 100 people looked at that same pattern, 99 should know where the stop loss goes, where the entry goes, and should get the same result. Now, this is how I've traded for probably five years. And I'm going through these periods where the market goes, hey, here's a really good winning streak. Now we'll go for an extended break even, small drawdown, back into a winning streak. And it can it can take time for the market to play out. So what I decided to do is three months ago to start forward testing. So alongside my main trading, I started to look at the market very objectively and charting up trades that didn't necessarily meet my plan, but I, they just felt right. They just felt good with all the tools I'm using as a trader. They just made sense to me. And for three months, my results have been night and day different to what I've experienced within pattern trading. So I decided over the weekend whilst doing my weekly review, I looked at these results. I looked at my account that's the pattern trading account. I look at the account that the discretionary trading and I said, enough is enough. It's been three months now. One of the equity curves is like this, and the other equity curve is just like this. And I'm like, I need to use this information as a trader, and I'm going to make a slight adjustment to my course. So I have decided with very small risk, my master account is now going to start trading my discretionary plays. And wow, am I nervous about that. So that's going to take a moment for me to adjust. Typically, this is the kind of trades I'm doing on stream. Very, very fluid with price. If I see a lot of confluences stack up, then I'm happy to take a trade idea on it. But I'm curious, have we got any discretional traders in chat? Are we pattern traders? Are we trading with indicators, fibs, moving averages? What's the, or even a time-based strategy? I'm curious, what kind of traders do we have in chat at the moment? Because I'm as I'm going through this, this transition myself, it's, um, it's a scary place. You know, I've been trading for for a number of years now, and, and we'd like to think, hey, after five years, you have your edge sorted out, you know exactly what you're doing. But the markets pivot and they change, and therefore our results can slightly adjust as well. And what I want to do is grow with that. Yeah, so interestingly enough, as the chat kind of uh, kind of comes in there, fills in and, 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 and shares with us how they trade, what they like to trade, um, I have more fun uh, trading discretionally a little bit um versus uh the pattern trades right um there it's good and bad uh it's good in the way that like if you feel like you're you're right with the markets and you're in sync and all of a sudden you're just kind of riding riding the waves of the market right you're you're, you're buying as it goes up and you're like yeah absolutely and you're like this is the time to sell i feel it and then you sell right after that and you're like oh my god i can ride these markets both ways i've had days on some stocks where i just know and feel right it just feels like i absolutely know where it's going and then i know okay and instead of selling i just flip my position i go from a long to a short because i sit there and tell myself well if i'm cutting profit here or if i'm willing to sell here 
And I know you've said this before, then why wouldn't mm -hmm. you go short there if you think it's going to go short? And if you even if you're in an uptrend, right, you say, OK, well, we'll, we'll play the retracement game, play the 50 percent retracement game. And for you fib lovers out there, the 62 percent retracement, you know, you're looking at the like, you know, those those retracement levels on the way down and you're sitting there kind of scalping those levels on the way down. And that seems to be the most satisfying. I would say that that is um, for me. Um, my second most profitable strategy with but it's the one that typically on stream people see me do because it's the one that uh you know in in a, in a short time in a short streaming window um i can show those trades those trades execute and they close out mm -hmm. right um whereas some of the other trades if it's off a 15 minute chart or even an hourly chart um those things play out over several hours and so you, you then have to kind of check back in on those things uh so to speak uh to see how those things stay, uh how those uh trades actually performed but i definitely have more fun doing discretional plays yeah. um i do take a combination of the fundamental and the uh the price action uh price and volume mm -hmm. That's that's what matters most to me. And then I take the 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 underlinement as far the the fun, the fundamental underlying things like how do people feel about this stock on that day? Um, and that'll tell me a little bit about where I could expect it to go, how much how much I could expect it to move. So those other factors still play in, but they weigh out less versus price and volume. Yeah, I'm I'm technically well, I'm, I'm only a technical trader. I stay out of the way of fundamentals and red news folders, but I'm just using technicals. Dave, let's pull up the uh, the heat map. Let's see what's moving in this in this bank holiday market. See if we get anything yeah. that's moving. Um, yeah, I'm looking at the, uh, the 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 US a little bit. No, no, no. Go ahead. I, I, yeah, I was just looking at this. I'm like, so did did we get any news out of China that would have caused uh, uh, Chinese uh, uh, Chinese pairs to to kind of uh, have a little bit more and they have they all have a same definitive reaction right it's not mixed at all uh we're looking at this and saying okay the uh, pairs that are pe pegged against the uh, yuan are uh all going to the upside um so uh in terms of foreign uh in terms of currency as you teach me about this right as 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 chat cheats uh teaches me about this that would mean there was a little bit of bad news out of china or that could be uh, negative for that and everybody's buying else every everything else against it or is this gaining ground against all the other currencies? Like when it's green and red, what does that actually mean? So when when it's all well, when it's all red, that currency is selling off against all okay. the other currencies collectively. So 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 this Jordan, is bidding up. Jordan uses this, uh, and he'll he'll look for strong currencies, and he'll look for weak currencies. And say, okay, we've got you know across the board, we've got a strong currency. This is a currency I want to be buying. I've got a weak oh, currency. This is a currency I want to be selling. But also we can fade the move as well. Manufacturing index B expectations. That might be what we're seeing. Yep. 50.8 as well. Um, yep. So that's moment. that's what we're seeing over over in uh, uh, Jordan's half of the world. Uh, he tends to pay attention to that. And we neglect it a little bit just because of the markets that we do trade. And, but then you, you go back to, you know, Euro USD uh and uh the pairs that we, we we typically look at and it's just like flat like it's flat uh 0.05 um and then uh da, 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 euro usd 0.04 so uh a little less volatile um but what i noticed on the hourly maybe it was just me that euro you uh, that gu was actually compressing a little bit on the hourly um you know, so it might play out over a longer period of time as, in terms of breaking out of that range. But it looked to me like it was uh, uh, compressing a little bit. But yeah, look, a little sleepy. Uh, but yep, news out of China. Thanks, Jordan. Right, <laughs> just adjusting my chart. I'm going to pull it up on screen quickly because I'm uh, I'm conscious. You know, when I was um, I said I'm going to take on this new challenge account and I'm going to build it up on stream. Um, I get I get so caught up in this in this account where we're trading lines on it that I I just completely forget to trade it. So probably today is not going to be the best day for me to. Trade I was getting ready to say like I wouldn't trade that challenge account today. Let's no. trade the likes today, but let's leave that account for some. You know, I I just think that the the opportunities in the market are going to be really limited, um, and it's just kind of uh, feel like it's going to be a bit more difficult to step into yeah. something with, with a little bit of conviction. Um, and maybe tomorrow that's going to show up though. 
let's have a look see if we can see let's let's see what's moving in the market so jordan is saying discretion is king supply and demand as well i'm a supply and demand trader i love to keep it simple supply and demand is what i call my discretionary trades i'm looking for areas where we can see these very nice price points and uh looking for the market to to kind of react and respond pretty well from them if we pull up the trade history on this we can see that this is well this is the last couple of weeks you see we we uh, what does this run back to the 21st so just just typically taking maybe one maybe two trades per stream and uh running running fairly fairly well at the moment so let's see if we can build this account continue building this account if we get more likes on this my lot size has got to be increased at the moment so 5.7 is the biggest size i've actively executed on this uh on this trading account uh trend trading using emas so um trend trading using emas done a little bit of back testing around that um but it was higher time frames it was daily charts looking for crosses of emas candle closes above as well and trying to follow higher time frame trends and um got some interesting results but ultimately i found it was a little bit too slow so i like to i like to probably get two maybe three trades a day what that does is that gives me sort of 40 to 60 trading opportunities a month for me to try and find a high probability uh, trade and you know it keeps me interested if i'm turning up and i get one trade a month two trades a month i know that i'm not going to be performing uh too well graham is saying i trade similar to you rich i find rigid rules um i find rigid rules can hold have held holding my tradings through areas where price really couldn't reject i'd rather just get out of those places yeah if, if like david says if you're willing to buy an area you're coming up to an area and you say hey this is a problem nine times out of ten market's either going to pull back or reverse especially if you're reading price well enough and that's what i found within my my pattern trading so much i would say well my rules are i have to get in here and i have to hold it and i'd look at it and i'd go i absolutely detest this trade it feels horrible and so i want to use those emotions and i want to say look why does it feel horrible because the price action is telling me this looks a terrible trading opportunity, yet your rules-based system says you have to take it. And so I would be sitting in these trades feeling absolutely rubbish as price just does exactly what I thought it would do. But I would say, well, I'm a, I'm a good trader. I have to pull the trigger whenever my edge presents. And that's how I'm going to make money over 100 trades, over 1,000 trades. Um, but caught it, it put me in some uh, uncomfortable positions as well. So now what I like to do with the discretionary trades is trade only when it makes sense. Now, and one thing to say, too, is that, um, you know, there's nothing against getting out of a position that you don't necessarily want to be in. Right. You can close a position and you say, I don't like the, you know, the way this trade feels. But what I will say, especially earlier on in trading, is to kind of make sure that you do have a system. You really, really do stick to that system, um, you know. Uh, you want to make sure that you give yourself the time to train yourself on how to trade a strategy, right? A lot of what people do is they, we get in a rush in these markets, right? And then we'll trade it for a couple of weeks, you know, and then all of a sudden we're like, yep, I've got this strategy pegged. I can add a little bit of discretion to the strategy. And then all of a sudden you're not actually trading that anymore. And you really have actually haven't traded your mind. So you definitely have to be careful before you move into the uh, into being a bit more discretionary to kind of allow yourself the time to trade you know rich is saying you know he's been trading the market over five years right and so over that span of time where he's been methodical and found an edge for tested an edge and then he, you know he continues to trade in that way and then he comes back and says i'm going to forward test a new strategy a different strategy see how that plays out because the one thing that we know for sure is that markets will always change Mm -hmm. And the longer the longer you give yourself to kind of be patient in those market changes, then you can kind of detect what you've seen before. All of a sudden, your brain, it's a wonderful thing, the human brain. It develops this thing called memory, and it remembers the last time the market did something similar and how the market reacted to those conditions. So now all of a sudden, you can rely on that. Now you have another tool that you've refined over time, not, not five minutes, not five days, not even five weeks, but over five years, yeah. you sat there and built a catalog of market conditions that allow you to say, I know even though this setup exists in this way and I typically trade it in this direction, the market's doing this. So therefore, 
I will either a not execute on that or be executed in a different yeah. way. So you can use that to, to kind of help yourself out. So when Rich is like, yeah, I'm going to do this and I'm going to actually, you know, pivot, you know, this one account to try and take advantage of, of, an, of an edge that I think I've seen over the past three months, understand that that comes with years of experience and not necessarily minutes. Yeah, I couldn't trade like this three, four years ago. I didn't have the chart vision and the experience. And my emotions would be lying to me. When I get in a trade and I go, hey, I feel uncomfortable, it might just be because I'm trading at too big a size. And and this, you know, why would we expect the market to be the same every single day? If it if on Thursday it moved 50, 60, 70 pips, why would we expect it to move that way on a Friday when it's a bank holiday? Why would we expect the next day to move like that if there's a red news folder? We've got to understand that the participants that come into the market are not the same exact participants with the same bias, with the same lot size, with the same accounts every single day. So therefore, the markets are very, very dynamic. They like to move very, very uniquely on a daily basis. So there's one thing I want to touch on, and then we're going to get into trading the charts. I'm going to see if I can find something on this. I'll show you how I mark up my charts every single day. Not when I'm on stream, what I'm doing on my personal account. So I'll show you how I'm looking at the market. There was an interesting comment in chat. Uh, what's the easiest way? Hang on. That's Jordan's answer to this. How do I cope with the stress when my trades are in drawdown? So it's not natural to put on a trade and immediately feel comfortable. Who would put on $10, $20, $100, even $1,000? Who would put that on and then sit there and watch this little thing at the bottom float around and go up and down and naturally feel comfortable? So we're, I've got to recognize from my life experience, I'm typically not designed and engineered or have that life experience that that's a natural, comfortable feeling for me. So the best thing that I could do is what Jordan says. Drop your position size. If trading with $1,000 risk is too much, then consider dropping your position size and pulling that down to much, much lower than that. When I'm doing my discretionary trades, I'm trading at a much smaller size than I typically would my pattern trading because I'm going to need to have time for this to bed in. So I want to sort of take my time, build these skills very, very slowly. But the other side of things is when you're, when you're trading, it's all about where you put your attention. And I love this. This is something I come across on the weekend. Where you put your attention, that's the thing that you will magnify in your life. So if you're looking at the charts and you're saying, I'm going into drawdown, and you're putting your attention on that drawdown, naturally, that's a rubbish feeling. You're not going to feel good with that. So where can we put our attention that helps us feel better? I'll tell you where I put mine. And it fixed my psychology overnight. I put my attention on one question and I asked myself this one thing. Have I executed my trading plan flawlessly within this trade? And if the answer is yes, I can relax because I cannot control what the market does after I pull the trigger. I can only control that I'm the guy that turns up and executes exactly when my back tested, proven strategy tells me I have an edge in the market. I do not know if that trade is going to win by a trade by trade basis. This is why I use risk management. If I knew that this next trade was going to be a winner, I'm going to full margin my account. I'm going to risk every single penny I can on it because I'm not going to lose. I do not know when the wins will come and I do not know when the losses will come. So I have to practice risk management. My, my feedback to you would be look at where you're putting your attention. If you're nervous, have you executed on your trade your plan flawlessly? And do you know that that plan has a proven profitable edge? If it doesn't, and if you're not, then you have reason to be nervous. If you are executing on your plan, if it is proven to be profitable, and has a track record, then there's no reason that you can't learn to feel comfortable because you can say, I'm doing the right thing. And if it still continues, reduce your risk. Barry, are you lying to me here? I'm just I'm just catching on chat and I'm seeing 52 likes. We have hacked the matrix. David, have you let me let me I'm gonna I'm gonna go take a peek because that would be oh buddy that would be absolutely insane. Let me let me pull this up and oh we're gonna be we're he is gonna lying be we're at 55. Time. 55 <laughs> likes. Okay. When, I've been accused of, of being too uh, too small on this. Where do we need to be? What do we reckon? 60 likes? 60 likes and we'll give away an account on stream? What, what do you reckon? What's that number? 
Can we can we breach uh, the six? I mean, I think we I think we can get there. I think I think honestly we can get oh I think we can get to 60. I think we can get to 60 and then you're going to be trading six lots tomorrow. And then I'm going to come back here on Wednesday and figure out what the heck you did with six lots. Wow. Okay. Okay. Well, <laughs> I let's, think, let's I think we can about... actually, uh, I think absolutely. It's, oh, we're at 58. Yeah. We're definitely going to get 60 and you're trading. Six well, we're lots. actually, uh, I think we're, we're new all time high, right? I believe when we were streaming. Uh, week, we yes, we just broke it. I believe it was 57 and we're up to 58. So, uh, appreciate all of you guys going in. Go, coming in here and, and, and smashing that um and and then yeah uh we'll, we'll get into the uh uh we'll get into the giveaway later but like I, I think uh you know let's let's see if there's some opportunities out there understand that it's not the smartest trading day uh but rich has a job to do on this specific account and this specific account only is to find a trade to execute on e, uh, on what he likes to trade uh, obviously you're going to probably be looking at gu or eu um yes. and uh see see what's uh see what's cooking in there um uh and i'm i'm gonna do the same and see if uh i'm if i can notice something uh even though i don't typically trade currencies i was looking at gu and it was on the hourly trying to hold on to this bottom but i think we're still continuing to feel a little bit of downward pressure uh on on the hourly uh we just wicked through an uh through a level that i thought mm -hmm. was of interest uh whether or not it's going to continue to use it as support uh or it's going to reject on there um but the range was just it's just ever so slightly kind of kind of kind of tightening a little bit in terms of uh where we came from and and you know what the direction is is obviously on the one hour uh we are uh I got my fib tool drawn up. Let me delete that. It seems that we were uh, we were in a bit of a downtrend, but like it mainly cat back past couple of days we've been like just consolidative and and, and side, sideways. Rich is going to quake. Oh we got baby, Becca, the uh, community manager at the Fivers, uh, the Discord community manager at the Fivers, saying you're going to have to ask Alex to increase the leverage on this. Uh, at this rate, absolutely. This is so. What I'm trading on stream. This is a five percent as online account. So what we've got here is I'll show the market watch. We can see the spreads maybe a little bit higher today, just because we're a bank holiday. So mm -hmm. I'm trading EU and GU. So let's see if we can find. There we go. So we're running 0.6 today. Normally I'm going to see this round about 0 0.1, 0 0.2, maybe 0 0.3 bank holiday. So spreads are a little bit higher today. Um, in EU as well. Where is EU on here? Still a Monday. There we go. So EU round the kind of spreads I'd normally see on this account. 0 0.2 pips in the spreads. Four dollars round trip in commissions as well. Let me show you why I chart up the mark the market the way I do. So I've got an indicator that does this on MT4. Haven't quite figured out how to do it on MT5. So MT5, I draw this manually every single day. So what I'm doing. Is I'm taking this beautiful line, don't ask me to tell you what color it is because I'm colorblind, and I'm putting it on the high of the day. I want this line to start roughly where the market opens, and then I'm putting it on the low of the day as well. And all this does, I've done the same for Euro USD. It gives me a reference of how high price has been today, and it gives me a reference of how low price has been. So very quickly, I can measure from this high to this low, and I can go, ah, oh, price has moved 16 pips. It just gives me an immediate feel. I don't use indicators, but I do use these lines just to give me an idea of the highs and lows. The only reason for this, for me, is that I believe people make decisions based on highs and based on lows. If we can see it, we can measure it. If we can measure it, maybe we can trade it. That's my very, very, very simple explanation on why I mark these up. So nice and simple. We can come up to the top here. We can click on these lines. You've got a trend line and then Good luck trying to get this straight. It takes me ages to try and get this line straight. And then that's all I'm doing and just pulling it over to wherever it is for the day. Now, this tells me immediately that we're in a 16 pip range. We're expecting this. It's a bank holiday. I'm not expecting typically big moves in the market. So I trade four hour, one hour and 15 minutes. And all I'm looking for is supply and demand areas. So this box up here, we were looking for the market to come up into this push away. This is what we saw over here, and it makes sense. And then this box down here, if I go to the four hour, we can see that this was a demand area, and I was looking for the market to come in and push away from it. And if we zoom in, we can see that this is what we've done a couple of times as well. Came into this area, we pushed away, we went higher, 
we came back into this area and I was looking for a push and a pullback from this area here. So nice, nice and easy supply and demand. Doesn't have to be overly complicated. We're here every single day, Monday to Friday, and I'm just doing the same things again and again and again and again. And this is the kind of stuff that I've got a three month track record off stream of using this kind of stuff. And um, as I said, well, we'll share the equity curve and show this at some point on stream. But it's, as it's a personal account, I'm not in too much of a hurry to do it. But it is beautiful. It's really, really encouraging to see. So what can I look at today? So I'm going to go down to the 15 minute and I'm going to look at this high and this low. And all this does is just tells me that sellers said this is as far as you go or buyers said we're going to take profit up here and push lower. And I like that the market comes back to areas where decisions were made. So we can look at this decision point down here where the market decided to push. Probably news looking at the way this candle printed and then just marking this up and saying, it makes sense where the buyers decided to be active, that they would come back and they would be interested in this area again and again and again. That's that's supply and demand trading for me. Nice and simple. No indicators. A little bit of discretion as to what, what areas um, I want to trade from. So all I'm going to do is look at these points down here where the market decided to push up pulled back again, decided to push up again, pull back and then pushed again. Now, I think this makes a lot of sense for the market to come back down to this area and find some buying interest. I would say if I had to put some mark, uh, markers on the chart, it would look something like this. Maybe the market comes down here and finds a little bit of buying interest. Would I hold this or trade this around red news events? Absolutely not. Why? Because I have seen so many times that the market will start here and then just suddenly print all the way down to here on a news event and does not care particularly for these levels. So at the moment, what I'm doing is I'm looking at this bullish pressure. The market's sitting in a range. All these candles are unreliable to me, but these candles are showing a little bit of a range. We're down to the low side of the range. I'd want to be out before the high of the day. So now I'm looking at this as my zone. Can I trade between this level and make a little bit of profit? It's not huge. Now I've got to start thinking, where's my stop loss going to go? So that would be the analysis on EU. I, I, I wouldn't mind buying this, but I kind of want to buy it a little bit under this low. Yeah, I, I think too, um, you know, we are coming up on a candle close on the 15 minute uh, here in about uh, two minutes and 45 seconds and counting. So we'll see how this candle closes and then we'll be able to kind of interact possibly uh, in and around the, uh, uh, the, the next candle uh, looking to see if we're going to be range bound today. But, and so, and, and looking at this from a, a fundamental aspect, you are right. We did have a number print in the U S market on Friday, right? That could, and that, that was an eight 30 uh, candle uh, eight, eight 30, my time, Eastern standard time here in the U S uh, so we printed a, a really bullish candle on EU, uh, kind of backed off of that. Uh, and nothing's what else has happened in the market, right? Nothing's happened in the market. So going to be a little bit more range bound, right? Instead of a trend uh, continuing to follow because volume's not in there, right? So you're just basically kind of be, you know, on lower uh, on lower volume days, I tend to see that we're a bit more range bound. And if, you, if you're an effective range trader, uh, then you can sit there and trade that range uh, fairly effectively. It's it's probably the weakest point in my trading is uh, is range trading, and I've had to reprogram myself to say, hey, you got to get better at range trading if you want to increase uh, increase your profits because you're not always going to catch a, a trend and be able to kind of ride that uh, over a couple hours or even or even an entire day. Uh, you're probably going to be stuck in the range and you need to be able to play that both ways. Um, so, you know, a little bit of back testing, a little bit of forward testing and then kind of moving on and being able to execute off that plan. Um, so, you know, you look at the news on, uh, on 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 currency pairs that are paired against the dollar. The dollar hasn't done anything since we got that print last Friday. We're going to get another print early tomorrow. That's still, you know, that's still uh, 24 hours a day or uh, 24 mm -hmm. hours away. I say 24. hours. There are, of course, there's 24 hours in a day. Um, but no, that's still almost 24 hours away. So you can't think about that. Um, if you're not trading a daily chart, there's nothing to think about there. You get your price action there. Um, you know, it's going to be really slow going, but uh, closer to a buy than it is a sell at the moment in this very, very, very confined range. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, David, I take my eye off chat just for a minute. 
And then we've got Jordan the instigator coming in, going, I really want to see Rich what trade a 20 lot position. 20. <laughs> let, me, let me put this on for, for context of what this would actually look like. So if I was genuinely trading 20 lots and I had to manage my risk, if I looked at this and said, hey, this is a buy. Now, I always want my stop loss in a place where I'm wrong, where it gives me more information about the market. So I don't want to buy this here and put my stop under here. Why? Because I see this higher time frame area where buyers were very interested in the market. I want my stop to be below the point where buyers had any interest because it would make them, for me, it would make more sense for a break and a retest to continue to the low side. So I want to gain more information with where I put my stop. Now, let's pull this fancy tool up here and I'll show you for context. Um, my apologies, I haven't changed the colors of these lines just yet. I'm working on it. I'll get around to it. Just bear with me. He doesn't me. know what colors they are. <laughs> That's that, that, yeah. that where we're at. Yeah, he's, he doesn't know that these are yellow or green, or he just knows their lines. <laughs> so what this tool gives me the ability to do is pull it up here, and it's going to show me where price currently is. So we can see this blue line, purple line, brown, whatever color this top line is, we can see that it's moving with price. And it's going to show me if I want to enter the market immediately, this is the price I'll be buying at or selling. Then I get to move my stop loss to the place where I would like it to be. Now, I would like my stop down here, nice and wide. Gives me an opportunity for the market to move and breathe within the zone, I'm hoping, and then push up higher. Now, if I'm to change this and trade the 20 lots that Jordan is trying to bait us into trading on stream, and I and that's $3,700 of risk. Now, I can change this to pending, and if I pull my entry lower, we can see that what's happening is the risk is getting smaller because my stop loss is tighter. So if I was to put, say, my entry round about here, this is the price I would like to buy at. I'd like to have my stop in a place where I'm wrong. I'm still risking $2,100 on the account. So I've got a little bit of work to do on this account. I definitely want to uh, build the account up. And I'm, I'm kind of like that the likes are increasing, but kind of gently, gently, guys. Yeah, let's, let's, not, let's not just jump to... Uh, to 20 lots overnight. It's going to be, I mean, don't uh, uh, do it. Uh, I, I'd like to see you it. jump to 20 lots. I think I'm on, I'm on team <laughs> Jordan here. Uh, you know, uh, if, uh, if the like, if the likes are up there, um, then that's just, that's just what's going to happen. And you'll be stuck tra trading 20 lots. And hopefully you've had nothing but profitable trades leading up to that point so that you can give yourself a little bit of a buffer because you're basically risking two, three percent. Uh, on that uh, on that account per trade, um, so uh, it, it would be it, it would be rather interesting to know. Uh, definitely appreciate all of the support from all you guys in chat. Um, and, yeah. and and yeah, sit tight. Uh, we're gonna look for some trade opportunities, and then we're, and then we're gonna give away an account. Uh, and 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 Rich, uh, the overlord, he's he's got he's got this all figured out. So we're excited to uh, uh, we're excited to do that um, and to have the opportunity to do that for sure. But man. I you know, I look at back. I'm looking at EU and I'm like, man, I should have just bought this. Like I'm, I'm talking my way through this. Right. And I'm like, ah, I should have just bought, you know, bought when I said I was going to buy. And I could have been like 35 cents in profit um, in my account. I would have been, you know, uh, over the moon just to uh, feel kind of right. Uh, but, yeah, it's just really consolidative range. And that's mm -hmm. kind of what we're what we're continuing uh, to see on it. But you're right, Rich. It's like you've got a couple you've got a double bottom on the 15 minute. Right. Yeah. Um, I would actually, uh, in terms of what I, when I trade equities, um, you know, uh, okay, I would it. say that David, this one is second. not the... I'm just going to jump in this. Hold on. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at this for too long. I just need to be involved in this. So 3.1 lots. We got 31 likes on Friday. So I'm trading uh -oh. 3.1 today. Okay. 20 lots is a, is a long way off, but today I'm executing on 3.1. I believe the market will pull and bounce. This is what I'm looking for. Now, I've got a lot of readers up here to be interested in being a seller. So I'm at the price I want to be. My apologies for interrupting. As a seller? A slow, as a seller. Yeah, as a seller. Okay. It's a slow moving day. But what we've got is this range. But I've got this selling interest from this high. I've got a selling interest from this high. I'm a big fan on head and shoulders patterns as well. So if I can see typically like a high, a high high, a break of structure, I'm very, very keen in the market coming back up and often testing, even if it comes to close to these highs over here. So I pulled the trigger on the first trade of the day. 
I do not love this trade. This is not where my edge comes from with this trade. So everything we're doing, remember, it's for entertainment purposes. Nobody in chat has a reason to be copying this. I will I will go on record to say my job is to turn up, make sure I execute on this trade, but this isn't my highest favorable trade. I would rather sell from a little bit higher or buy from mm -hmm. a little bit lower, but conscious that when we're just not moving as much today. So we're trading only. 3.1, I say, only relative to what chance <laughs> being about to trade, about to trade seven lots tomorrow, buddy. <laughs> hey, what? seven. So uh, it looks like, happened? yeah, uh, we're creeping up on the likes. We were at 64 last count, we're at 68. So you're trading, yeah, you're going to be trading uh, double the size tomorrow at a minimum. Oh, I'm so excited for this. Oh, wow, uh, okay. Um, oh my goodness. I better put in. I'm, a, so happy. I'm, gonna aim I'm happy for you. I'm so happy for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. Um, well, oh. you, you guys and girls have turned up in force, so we're going to be giving away an account on stream. In my typical underprepared fashion, I do not. Um, I do not have a, a, a code word or a keyword. Now, what I need to do is I need to put in a word that everybody then types in chat. And that's the word that gets you entered into the draw. And my mind has, is blank. It's a Monday morning. So help me out in chat. Give me some ideas. Oh, give me, some, give me something. I mean, how vanilla or how creative do you want to be? Do you want to be about this? We, we can be creative. Bearing in mind, okay, we want to want to be. It's got to be easy enough to type, though, YouTube. right? We have to be. Yeah. No, yeah. And we have to be able to show this to. Uh, yeah. So keep it PG thirteen rated or better. Uh, and uh, yeah, throw it in, uh, <laughs> just put in blank. I love it. it. It's just, you just like, here's the keyword, and then like, run it back. April Fools, we never, we didn't even touch on that. It's April Fools Day. It we is. are, in fact, giving away an account, though, right? That's not April Fools. We are, we are, we are. Giving okay, away. okay, so that's not. Oh, my mind yeah. is blank. Oh, yeah, like the whole <laughs> snap. It's rich <laughs> quake. Hey, oh, oh, my mind is blank. He's April blank. Fools, yeah. I love it. Oh, so rich trading word... 20 lots. Okay. Ooh, max lots. I mean, we're way off that. Max lots. Oh, I right. love I'm, it. I'm going to get this pulled up. Let's, uh, let's see if we can get this organized. And then we will go ahead and roll out this. Where are we? Down here. Easter um, day. Some good suggestions we... coming from the chat. Some good some good suggestions for okay. sure. I, I previously used the word trade delicious, and I got called vanilla. Alex, come on stream. He's like, Rich, this is super vanilla. You can do better than this. So, uh, so um, yeah, we, we do have a limit of one account per winner per week. And we had to create this rule because of one special audience participant who I believe it was two weeks ago turned yeah. up and won an account on the Wednesday. And then on Thursday, they turned up and won another account. And then the following week, they won a third account as well. So I don't see nature in chat at the moment. But He feels on. bad. I think he knew I was coming on. And I miss him. <laughs> he, and, uh, I think uh, I can't, somebody in chat earlier mentioned, like, oh, David's here. So therefore, nature's <laughs> going to win. What on earth is this, Harry? <laughs> I cannot have this as the keyword. Absolutely not. Oh, uh, um, is this? There's your keyword. I'm just kidding, guys. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to count how many dots, dots. that is. <laughs> it's seven dots, not six, mm. not eight. No, uh, uh, I, I think, um, yeah, I think you've got you've got some inspiration in there. I, I think, uh, I think you just select one, and as as we get uh, uh, as we get moving, uh, uh, you know, uh, yeah, uh, vanilla, need, vanilla, need another, another. What you wish for, right? Need to be careful what you wish for. Trading, you know, seventy likes, trading seven lots. I mean, come on. If we look at this history and we look at what we were trading just just you know in the in the in the coming few weeks, I mean, what were we trading? Two lots, 3.3, 1.25. This was probably uh, this is the DAX. So ignore the DAX. This is uh, this is my kind of bread and butter. I've got a, about a 90% win rate on the DAX. So anything I'm doing on the DAX, it's it's not going to follow the same lot size. 2.7, uh, 2.8. 3.7, 2.8. So we can see we're nice and consistent here. 5.8. That was our record. 3. That was last uh, last week, uh, Wednesday. Uh, so you traded that on Thursday. Uh, yes, this was yeah. So we hit 58 yeah. likes on Wednesday. So on Thursday we traded 5.8 lots, and then 3.9. And you're telling me I've got to trade seven lots 
There's, there's yeah. nothing on this screen here that represents anything even remotely close to that. I'm, uh, I'm in seven point one lots. Even so, even more than seven <laughs> lots. You had to trade seven point one lots. So, um, I guess uh, you know. I mean, that, we're talking seventy one dollars per pip of movement. So if this guess trade, you don't need a lot of pip. Guess you don't need to catch a lot of pips. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> we can see this trade starting to roll over, come close to break even. I mean, if this is a losing trade at the moment, it's. Uh, I'm just trying to see what am I risking up here. So we're risking. If I can just highlight this, three hundred thirty dollars. So trading seven lots, this would be an eight hundred dollar trade as well. Eight hundred dollars risk. So it's important to note the way I trade is negative risk to reward. So if I'm risking $1,000, I'm not always trying to make 1000 I like a nice high win rate. So if I'm risking 1000 I might be happy with 350 I might be happy with 500 I might be happy with 1200 Sometimes I've gone, you know, close to sort of $1,000 risk and gone for $1,500. And then I've cut the trade at $400 because of price action. So my win rate typically is, um, yeah, it's a, it's, I don't want to say exactly what my win rate is, but it's well above 65%. But that's why I trade negative risk to reward. If I was trading at one to one, so risking a thousand to make a thousand, my win rate might be 60%. But I, I can say my win rate is over 70% on my discretionary plays. But the risk to reward isn't one to one. And I know that my win rate would come down if I was to do that. So I want to be conscious of that. So I'm going to take a moment because we have a whole lot of people in chat at the moment who, who are a little bit new to what Trade Delicious is about. So Trade Delicious at its core, its mission is to elevate the space for the retail trading world. This is this is our mission at Trade Delicious is to, is to be able to bring on and share traders who have been in been in this for a little while. We're also interested in having on guests who are just kind of feeling out the trading space and just having a chat about trading in general. But what we want to do is provide you guys with value to help elevate this, this retail trading space so you can make better decisions. Today, we've already touched on trading plans. We've touched on weekly reviews. We've had a brief summary of kind of supply and, uh, supply and demand trading, which is what I do. We're showing the history of the account. We're trading responsibly on stream as best we can, as long as the likes don't go in a upwards uh, in a, in a you know in a straight direction. Louise Bedford has some amazing psychology content within the video section. If you're struggling with psychology, if trading feels a little uncomfortable from time to time, check out those videos. They are fantastic. Jordan does traders of money episodes as well. Fantastic opportunity to just listen to some traders as Jordan has an interview with them. That's um, Marcelo was on a a um, hedge fund trader had over a hundred million of assets under management, and all of this was shared and spoken about in that in that interview of traders with money. Uh, US streams, David and Aaron, are Tuesdays. Thursdays, you've got stock traders, equity traders, futures traders coming on. You've got cryptos traders joining those as well. Um, and a brand new website as well. Brand so new speaking website. of the website, um, as you talk through this, I, I already kind of had it queued up. I'll bring it up here and just to show you guys. This is what the website looks like now. You've got the schedule. Uh, you can see uh, what's currently playing on the channel. I have the autoplay turned off because uh, the first time I showed off the website, it started playing and then it just started echoing. It was like one of those weird things. But yeah, no, you can see what we've got going on right now. You can kind of see the schedule. You can kind of see what we've posted, uh, the series that we have down here. You can see here in, in a couple things in white, right? We've got futures focus uh, coming soon. So if you're, if you're wondering how to trade futures, Aaron's going to be... Uh, uh, talking talking through that um, in terms of trading futures. Uh, there's also the uh, Crypto Cafe uh, with Boris. Again, if you're interested in the crypto space, you know, what we have here at Trade Delicious is variety. We always talk about like there's people trading all kinds of stuff here. Um, probably everything except gold. Um, we'll look at a gold chart, but there, um, you know, but in terms of like what we trade here at Trade Delicious, anything from FX, stocks, futures, crypto, uh, we've got you covered and then different ways, different uh, bits of trading experience, whether it's been on the retail side or even with Marcelo being on the institutional side of trading and, and trying to gleam a little bit of like what they do over there and how they think about position management. It is a little bit different than what we do on the retail side. And sometimes you might just kind of catch something. So the way the U.S. dreams are scheduled right now, we've got uh, Boris on Tuesdays typically. 
Uh, he typically comes on Tuesday. He is on vacation this week, so we won't have Boris on this week, but we typically have him on Tuesdays uh, to talk crypto with us. And then we have Marcelo uh, on Thursdays. He's always looking at uh, oil charts uh, and and some other things in terms of uh, kind of position management. And and he, uh, you know, in terms of being able to to talk with him and trade with him, uh, provides me a lot of insight in, as to the mind of an institutional trader. So uh, yeah, come to the website. You can kind of see everything uh, that we've got going on. You can click the subscribe button up here on the top right. Uh, make sure that you keep up with everything we're doing here at Trade Delicious. And we certainly appreciate again. You guys uh, hopping on with us on a super, super slow Monday morning uh, bank holiday in Europe. And, uh, you know, all of us here at the in the U.S. are just waking up uh, from our Easter fog, all full of lamb and fish and ham and everything else we had over the Easter weekend. And now we got to drag our butts back to work uh, for the week. But certainly appreciate you guys. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Right, we have got the word. It was a word that was shared in chat. That's your clue. That's your head start. We've got a word. So we've already got one one participant in this. And it was the word that made me chuckle. I've been called vanilla before. So I was like, you know what? I, I want to go with this word. It made me chuckle. I saw the word vanilla. I was like, hey, maybe I am. Who, who knows? So this is our giveaway word at the moment. So what you got to do, you got to hit I knew it. Button. I flipping knew it. I was like, oh, yeah. If you want to be entered into this draw, what you got to do, you got to hit that like button and you've got to type in exactly as it appears on the screen right now. Vanilla. All one word. No hashtags, no spaces. I do not know if this is case sensitive. So you might want to try a capital V. You might want to try a small V. But if you enter that in chat after hitting the thumbs up, you're going to be entered into this live draw, which we'll give it we'll give it a moment. We'll let people have an opportunity to enter into this. Um on Friday, I think we said, or Thursday, we said, if this trade rolls over into profit, the time's up. I'm going to immediately enter on this. I'm going to give it a little bit longer because I appreciate we've got over 60 people. Appreciate all of you for being here in chat, supporting us. This is a little bit of an unorthodox stream, obviously, trading on a bank holiday weekend. Again, I'm going to be the one that says it. This is not where my trading edge comes from. The trade does make sense. The entry is a little bit early. But I, I believe that we will trade down and take these lows. That's the idea behind this. Not looking for a huge trade. But if you guys keep turning up, if we keep getting these lumps, if that keeps pushing up, then I'm going to be forced to increase the lot size and use my experience to manage risk on the account. So quest, question with that, again, um, you know, now uh, I'm not familiar with what rules and what your contract with the chat is in terms of trade the likes other than that's the lot size that you're going to enter in a position are partials allowed? And what I mean by that, are you allowed to build a position? Do you have to go all in at that price? Can you work your way into a position? Can you work your way out of a position? Like in terms of position management, were there any rules? Was there a contract with chat that said, I have to do all in, all out? Uh, or is it is there a little bit of room in there for you to actually effectively manage a trade? Because I would say, like, for example, if you're trying to get all out of a position, right, um, it might make sense sometimes to, you know, and this is just me. This is just my own individual trading strategy or, you know, is like I'll take a partial, right, mm -hmm. leave, leave leave a little bit of a runner on and then kind of continue from there. What what is what is your contact with chat when it, when it comes to that? Or is there not? You got you get to make your own rules up. Okay. Okay. So the Jordan said, I'm absolutely crazy for this. And uh, I'm, I, I kind of thought, you know, maybe we might increase one like a day, maybe, maybe four or five likes a week. I didn't expect that our like count would near enough double. Um, so I'm, I'm a little nervous about this. And I think Jordan is definitely laughing at me right now. But the idea is that when I identify my trade opportunity, I'm going to go full size with the likes so trade the likes from the previous stream full size one entry i'm not allowed to split it into multiples now okay when it comes to taking profits there's no kind of a range rule about this but what i know from my data is that i'm more profitable when i take a full position off at the price mm -hmm. i want so if we look at this trade we, we're, we're seeing a little bit of selling interest round about these highs uh if i jump to the five minute we can see this beautiful left shoulder up here we can see mm -hmm. the head break of structure to the downside and i said it wouldn't be too much to ask for the market to come back up to this price point we're seeing a little bit of selling interest here that's okay if this fails we've got a similar kind of pattern over here obviously the trade will be going super deep but we're seeing a little bit of selling interest now if this trade was to move lower i'm most profitable by 
taking all off at the price point that makes sense to me. So all in with one size and typically all out as well. But all right. underneath this video, you will see a link to Trade Delicious Discord. In that Discord, we post the trade analysis from the streams. We have a chat about trading in general. So if you're not in it, feel free to join the Trade Delicious Discord. Um, I do my best after the streams to enter in these trades and then just kind of post when I make any adjustments. Not that anyone from chat would be copying these analyses. Surely so, it's not the uh, reason why we're doing it. So a uh, question in the chat. I wrote uh, I wrote thrice, I guess, so I'm not disqualified, right? Uh, I think as long as you write the keyword vanilla, uh, either caps or lowercase, not sure. Probably ought to cover your basis with both to make sure that you're entered into the giveaway. I think you're mm -hmm. going to be all right. I think yeah, uh, you won't be disqualified in this. If you, you know, ideally, ideally don't spam vanilla in the chat, but as long as you've entered it with capital, and maybe entered it with a small. I don't know if there's a little opportunity there to get to get in the in the board, but you're you're definitely going to get entered in if you've hit that like button and you've typed vanilla in the chat. Um, how many entries do we have? I see Jordan saying we have 75 entries at the moment. This is what we're currently looking at at the moment. And I'm watching this trade pull back into a little bit of red. I like I like this. I I tell you why I took the entry. I looked at this selling pressure on the one minute just kind of melt down from here. And I thought, let's see if we can get a little bit more selling interest round about here on the one minute. So I don't trade one minute charts in terms of just one minute price action, but oh I my do God. like to use that for my entries on occasion, but only in higher time frame oh, context. Buddy, I tell you, we were talking seven lots. Yep. Mm -hmm. We might be talking eight lots. Seriously? So I, you, I'm you, I'm looking at 78 likes as it stands right now. You so might have you're to, definitely trading 7.8 lots. You might be trading eight lots tomorrow. So, uh, but again, I think, uh, you know, tomorrow should have better opportunities in the market, more precise entries. Uh, spreads will be a little bit better, a little bit you're more You're trying liquid. to make me feel better. Are you yes, trying to make me feel I am better? trying. I am trying. <laughs> I, I am trying to make you feel better about this. Um, wow. You know, I, I, um, uh, but that i mean that's all thanks to to the chat um i we we certainly appreciate you guys turning up on the monday morning on a on a bank holiday no less um uh, spending their their time with us this morning i hope I, I certainly hope you've had a good time so far uh make sure that you uh uh you get uh your self entered uh for a fibers account if you have not already i see lots of uh um uh, Lots of vanilla Let me uh, in the chat. This up. Good morning, Anna FX. We were just talking about you a little bit earlier on in the stream and saying, hey, well, you joined us on Friday stream and I managed to sneak a small bit of profit before the market rolled over in your direction. Good morning. Happy new month as well. It is it's first day of the quarter, actually, thinking about this. Mm -hmm. First day of the new quarter as well. First day of the new quarter, first day of uh, of uh, of the month. Um, you know, again, we talked about the, uh, the, the, the data print that we got on Friday, uh, the mm -hmm. U S markets really haven't traded since then. Um, uh, you know, they'll trade today. They'll probably, you know, in the equities world, there'll be some individual catalysts that kind of move, uh, specific names around probably going to be consolidated markets. And then I think, uh, this week we'll get into trading in earnest because you should, as you, you know, when we were talking, uh, early, uh, you know, we just literally had news after news after news, red folder on the U.S. dollar after red folder on the U.S. dollar. So what that's mm -hmm. going to mean for me uh, is that that there that there's definitely going to be some opportunities in the equity space to trade things that are moving with the market. <laughs> Dave, there's no point trying. You do everything you can to make Rich feel better. I'm yeah. trying. That's what I mean. I'm here. I'm here to make sure that. Number one, that Rich trades uncomfortable size on this trade the likes account, <laughs> and that it, it that it gets excessive. And and here we are, right? Uh, pretty much at eight lots. We're gonna. I mean, I I have full faith and confidence that when I wake up tomorrow, um, and sneak in here to see how many likes Rich has to trade, that we're gonna be trading eight lots because we're only two likes away from it. I'm certain wow. that future me or future someone, right, is gonna come back. They're gonna watch the stream. They're gonna say. Oh, these guys were, uh, you know, even on a bank holiday, super, super entertaining, super informative um, and uh, had a had a lot to share. And uh, yeah, I need to I need to go ahead and give this video a like 
and we're going to be trading eight lots tomorrow on this account. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm pretty sure we're going to we're going to be at that point. Uh, when it David, this is this is um, this is so unfair, and I'll tell you why. If this trade goes up, here's my stop. I'm going to lose three hundred dollars. That's okay. If we look at the account, we can see that we're up sixteen hundred dollars. I can mm -hmm. weather five losses, six losses, seven losses. I've built the right. I've built the equity down here to be able to weather multiple. Oh wait, losses. wait, wait. I... Hey, uh, just a second. I'm sorry. If you, uh, you you need to change the spelling on your entry, my friend, because that is not the way you spell Manila. It will uh, not yes. enter you into the competition. So. Please do not uh, spell it that way. That's that probably how I, I uh, how I was, how I spell it. To be fair, I did have to double check the spelling when I saw it in chat and when I typed it in. But what I was saying is, if if I'm now going to come back on Tuesday and I'm going to trade eight lots, one loss could easily wipe out thousand dollars, and that is so unfair. If I was trading at that size the whole time, the account would be three, four, five, six thousand dollars in profit. So this is going to be a little bit of pressure. Um, but the, uh, the main thing I'll say on this is, again, and I'm going to draw on my experience. This is me affirming oh. to myself to try and help me here. If this market runs higher, takes this stop, <laughs> it would look a good long from here. So I would get more information. I would like this to break, pull back, and I would look to long from here. If it goes down and pulls back, I would look to possibly resell from here as well. So my stop again is always in a place where I get more information about the market. Yeah, and I didn't enter a position because we were kind of diddling in the middle and not making decisions about where we could go, right? So obviously you do have a responsibility that you are honoring by trading the likes. But the good news is that even if this trade goes bad for you tomorrow, you'll be able to revenge trade with eight lots because <laughs> we are officially over 80 likes on the chat. Wow. Uh, appreciate, yeah, and uh, I think Becco and Anna were conspiring to make sure that that happened. Um, they were at the middle of a combo <laughs> on it, but no, uh, uh, sure enough, uh, 81 likes and counting. Thanks so much to all of you for but hanging it, out. David, it's not here. just that. If this trade doesn't play out today, I have broke my 10 consecutive winning day streak. Oh, we, come on. I, this is not it's where my edge is. I kind of want to sneak not. a little profit here, and I want to get that 11 days. I want to come back on a Tuesday and go, hey. Well, you, but are you gonna, Are you going to sneak in here and say, okay, I get a half a pip of profit. Can I start <laughs> shaving pips in half? to see if we can do that um you know i'll do what uh, it takes yeah <laughs> so i i think that, that no i think it's amazing um you know yeah i don't think this trade is amazing i think it's because it's just kind of diddling around uh you know i i, I my first forex trade on the stream right i don't typically uh i don't typically sit in a trade for more than 20 minutes, 30 minutes, something like that. That's like a long-term trade for me, right? I sat in that doggone thing for six hours. It was a winner. It was a, yeah. a winner on EU, but boy, boy, I needed two o'clock. I needed to get Fed news. I, need, I needed the Fed rate decision to finally move the doggone thing in the direction that I thought it was going to move. And then I missed, unfortunately, again, it was, I was already, uh, uh, it was already um, kind of set up where my take profit was going to be, where my stop was going to be. You know, I wasn't actively managing the position. I missed the huge move after <laughs> after the Fed announcement. It could have gone even, even more. Um, but that's OK. Right. Like I've missed so many trades. I miss trades every day at this point. So mm -hmm. I don't it, the FOMO isn't necessarily as real anymore because I have lost enough on FOMO trades. That I don't, I don't, I'm like, yeah, I don't need to like strike at your levels, uh, trade your edge, make sure that you trade that, you know, honestly, like uh, you could be in a trade against somebody, right? Because the market's a zero sum game and still it, it's depending on your, your time horizon and your, and your management style, you know, one trade's probably going to be better than the other because both still make money off of it. So yeah um you know i i that's that's my favorite thing about the markets is that's is one thing about traders isn't it so hang on let me let me just quickly say this so final calls in the account giveaway if you have not hit the like button if you have not typed vanilla in chat you will not be entered into this account giveaway final calls we're coming close to that final bell we're going to give this account away live on stream in just a couple of minutes so last opportunity to get that in as a trader of time if you trade for a while you get used to having an outcome that's not necessarily as you want 
you make friends with that outcome. You say, you know what? If you can hit my stop, it's just one good loss. And I'm willing to pay for that good loss and use that information to maybe steer my ship over the next 50 trades, over the next 100 trades. So we're not getting too attached to the outcome of any one particular trade. Unless chat turns up and suddenly hits 80 likes and then I'm I'm oversizing. And I saw it in chat. You might as well, you might as well call me um because I'm um, yeah, the lot size is going to be getting up there as well. So uh final calls, final calls. If you haven't hit the likes button, if you haven't hit, type vanilla in chat, then we you will not be entered into this. I'm just saying, Joel, I'm just reading on this. Did we did someone get timed out for uh for spamming chat? Oh no, banned <laughs> comment. User was removed. Okay, no problem. Um, I did see a little bit of profit on this, David. I was I was watching this. I was like, can we see? I mean, I'll be honest. I'll be uh, I honest. think, I mean, we're just going to be, oh, man. See, that was my problem. That's why I was waiting for that candle close. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I think the more definitive levels, you have them drawn up, right? And you're like, okay. And that's kind of why I was asking, like, building into a position, right? Because one of the things I look at, right, and – um you know, in terms of like, okay, can I enter into multiple multiple legs on a position? And I'll bring my charts up just to kind of show. Um, so if I'm going to trade this, right, and I say, okay, we've got a, basically kind of a triple top forming on the 15 minute on EU, right? And I'm sitting there saying, I want to trade support and resistance. This to me is some sort of resistance up here on a 15 minute level, right? But you got bigger levels up here. So you know you at least have a backstop, but you're not where the best sells on this are. Could we consolidate in and around these prices for a while? Maybe so you can. That's why I said, OK, well, maybe enter a partial here, a partial sell here um, and then enter into more of it here with using some sort of stop in and around above here um, in order to be able to kind of place a trade and actually build this into a position of sorts instead of just getting all in or all out. Understand we trade the likes. We can't do that. That's why I asked about your contractual obligation with yourself and the chat. Um, but th when I look at this, the other thing I look at too is like, I tend to give precedence to more recent price action. What do I mean by that? Like all this price action is important. It makes sense, right? But if I'm entering into the position and I have, I'm like this trade, it was either entered, closed, or I'm not still in this position. I'm in, I'm looking to participate here. I'm seeing continuous upward pressure on the price we do have, uh, you know, so I'm like, if I'm trying to enter this short, where am I actually wrong on this? Like this 15 minute level does not give me the confidence necessarily mm -hmm. to say, hey, this is a great short. And you've acknowledged that already. But now we're still we're still and then we're looking at the time of day. Right. Europe is open. Kind of not really. Markets are sleepy you know mm -hmm. in terms of like the market timing right if this was typical market time you're like okay we're into we're, we're into the european session we're you know the longer this goes in this direction towards new york and if there if new york doesn't have a number printing then we could probably see a continued trend in the direction that that's going yeah. when we're less likely to see a key reversal spot at around 8 30 Eastern Standard Time when we typically get our numbers prints there in the U.S. So there's a lot of factors that go into it for me in terms of like what is price doing and then what time of day. I've noticed that I perform better at certain times of day or when I take into account what could be happening in and around these times. That doesn't necessarily keep me from executing, but it does allow me to fact that it does allow me to manage the position a bit more effectively to make sure that number one, I'm out of the way of any volatility that might happen. Um, and you know, for me, I'm like, okay, well, maybe I'll take a, a tenth, you know, 10% of my position, put the stop wherever it needs to be, and then you know, see if I can get some runners hold for the dream, if you will. It, you know, I'm not looking to retire in one trade, right? But if you can catch that and you get used to catching, uh, catching volatile moments, um, you know, you you steal yourself a little bit into making sure that you can deal with volatile markets. Cause if we don't trade any Amber folders or any red folders, you're not going to make money in this market. It's just, you're just not going to, um, you just have to be aware that those things are existing and manage your positions, uh, as effectively as you can. So, um, Absolutely. hopefully just, this trade moves to where you want it to go. Profit. Just as you yeah, said, I was getting ready to say, I'm looking, I'm looking at this. I'm like, I see that. And that's kind of like, you do have a triple top here. You've got a bottom consolidation here. You've got buyers that came in here. You've got buyers that came in here. So you're mm -hmm. sitting at or around where you need to be uh, yeah. temporarily, 
right? Because you are against these these tops here, but you could be proven wrong, wiped out, and then be proven right uh, here in about a few hours. Thank you very much for the subscription, the like, and sharing on your X account as well. Really, really appreciate that. Now, one quick message before we give this account away. This like, is a blessing to be able to give away an account. It's a blessing to have such a large audience turn up and, and just rally behind the message here at Trade Delicious, which is to elevate that retail trading space. But ultimately, what we want to do is just share our analysis. We want to share our trading experience. We want to share and build community around trading and just just bring such an awareness to the retail trading game, how you can elevate your own trading. So it's great to be able to give away an account on stream. It's great that you turn up and you subscribe and you hit that like button. And this is at its core. The message here at Trade Delicious is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. We are here. We are executing on live trading um, or live markets as well. So just want to want to make sure that at its core, the mission here is, is, is understood. It's not just to turn up, hey, see if I win an account. There's a bigger picture here at Trade Delicious. We're building something big within the retail space. And we, we just want you guys and girls to be a part of it. And we appreciate you all for being here. Now, without further delay, without further ado, let's uh, let's let's pull this up. We've, we've rolled into profit. This is the word that you had to put in chat. We've all had plenty of opportunity to hit that button, to hit the thumbs up button, to write vanilla in chat. So let's do it. Let's go ahead and give away. It's time. It is time. On was that 89 entries? 80. Well, I'm sorry. I'm looking at my trading terminal. 89. We got 92. 92. Yeah. 92. Good luck, everyone who participated. If you did not get any traction on this, we are back tomorrow. We'll be giving away another account tomorrow. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, five days a week. We are live streaming, live trading on the markets and giving away an account every single day. Without further ado, good luck. Every single person who put their name into this hat, let's see what happens with this. Quick disclaimer, Nature, if you are in the chat and if you win, no, Nature hasn't won this week. Fresh week, Nature, he, you're... It's, it's, it's first of the week. It's first of the week, so yeah. he hasn't won this week. I didn't, I haven't seen him in the chat, so he might be taking, okay. uh, he might be on bank holiday himself. Okay, and US traders as well. Unfortunately, US traders are not able to participate in the account giveaway. So something that we're just information that I'm working with. So further ado, good luck. 94 entries. Let's see who wins and takes home an account from our sponsors, the five percenters today. Oh, buddy. Hellboy, 30. Fresh name. New new member to the streams, not seen this name before. Congratulations on winning this account. For those of you that did not get any traction on this account, come back tomorrow. We'll have another account to give away. Hellboy, what I need you to do, link in this description after the stream. I need you to click on the Discord link. Join Trade Delicious Discord. At the top, you will see my name. It will be in red. It is Rich. Send me a direct message on that. If I'm not online, I'll be online a little bit later on today. Reach out to me on the Discord, and we will make sure that we sort you out your new trading account. Congratulations. Congratulations on that. And uh, I'll, I'll be, I'm going to go on record, and I'm going to say this. Last week, I saw I saw Jordan just, just pop up in chat. And Jordan rallied around chat and he said, maybe we'll give away two accounts. And I'm not I'm not going to say that's the case immediately, but, you know, there's always the opportunity. If you just want to add Jordan in the Discord, if you want to get in Trade Delicious Discord and just send Jordan a cheeky little message on there, maybe maybe we can do a little bit more on stream for you guys. If you keep turning up and supporting the channel and, and just building this community of traders, then maybe maybe just, just send Jordan a cheeky little nudge. See if, uh, see if we can make... More happen on stream, but I'm curious what's happening with this trade. Are we winning? We're break even. Uh, yeah, you're about break even. It's really just you know I'm looking at this chart here, um, and we're about at at or around your entry, um, and just kind of middling around here. Uh, you know, it's just what it is, right? Low volume on a day, so at least you're not in a losing position. You haven't found out you're completely wrong yet. Uh, but you exactly also haven't broken. found that. Oh, look. Oh, wow. Yeah, there we go. Look at that profit roll in. But uh, we got it. We've got a, one thing I've got to be mindful of this. So 3.1 lots. I'm trading $4 mm -hmm. round trip in commissions. So it's going to take three 
0.1 times $4. So it's going to cost me a little over $12 to place this trade. When I close this trade, it will cost me $12 in commission. So I need to see more than $12 in profit to be breaking. In order to break even. Yeah. So I'm not just yeah. trying to, I'm not trying to catch a pip on this. I have an analysis in this. I'm going to put it in the Discord. We're going to leave this trade to play out throughout the day. Ideally, if I can see the market sort of move a little bit lower, we'll see if we can take a little bit of profit. I'm going to try. I've been accused of it before. I'm going to try not to trade my PL as much as an 11 day winning streak would be lovely. <laughs> now, Jordan's That's worried. Well, Jordan, you come on chat and I see you saying, let's get Richard to trading 20 lots. If you can give me a bit of friction, then I'm sure I get to give you a little bit of friction as well. But it's I all, tell you, I, he fun. got you to trading eight lots, though, because we're 8.5 lots. Wow. <laughs> Wow. So we, we did not just hit a new all-time high on this. Smashed we it, guys. Absolutely smashed, smashed it. it. So I want to take Thanks to you guys. Thanks. On a it's Monday, no less. On a Monday. On a, on a Monday. Bank holiday Monday. Now imagine what happens when the markets are moving in a favorable way, and I can actually do a proper analysis where I can look at the charts, break down multiple pairs. I mean, look at this. This is my this is my bread and butter, the DAX, and we have not printed any more price since the 28th of March. So these markets are closed. I, I cannot even formulate a trade idea on this as much as I'd love to. So uh, we're working with, with one hand behind our back today. But tomorrow, I think it'll be a different story. I hope. I hope the markets move better tomorrow. Yeah, no, I, I suspect that they will. Uh, I, I, I don't think I, I don't see a reason why not, unless we're not trading markets anymore. It's just everything will be opened up, and then we'll be getting into, into these news, uh, these news uh, uh, events uh, for mm -hmm. the week, and then yeah, uh, you know, there'll be there'll be more volatility, and 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 we'll be able to trade it. Uh, you know, we're gonna get a print. You know, and so like knowing that we're gonna get a print on USD at eight thirty in the morning, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, U.S. Standard like U.S. Uh, Eastern Time. Now you take that back. Go into your data bank. We talked. We talked about this early in the stream. What happens to the price of the pairs that you typically trade, or what you typically trade leading up to that? Because there's positioning that's happening prior to that, right? You know, is the market leaning long? Are they leaning short? Are they looking to sell? You know, like a lot of times it just kind of moves opposite of where where it would possibly be. So make sure that you. Draw back on that experience. Make sure that you're looking at that and saying, "Okay, we're getting, we're coming up to a news, uh, a news event." You could still take advantage if you if you are at levels that you want to interact with and can position a trade based off the time frame you, you typically trade, so that you could take advantage of the movement prior to, and then you get the eight thirty number, um, and then you can kind of figure out the reaction from there. Uh, we've been seeing a lot of. Um, not necessarily games, um, but you know, there's still been a lot of chop because the numbers have been kind of conflicting. You get a you get a bad inflation number and a good employment number, vice versa, and the market doesn't know what to do with it, mm -hmm. and it just kind of chops around a little bit. But you know, we're going to be on stream tomorrow, Tuesday, uh, over there in the U.S. Uh, so you know, feel free to join us over there, and uh, you know, you guys. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll look at the U.S. markets together. Uh, thanks, Abeko. Appreciate it. Uh, uh, Domingo, appreciate the nice comments. I appreciate being able to hang out with you guys. Um, you know, uh, it makes getting up at three o'clock in the morning to get ready for a three thirty stream uh, absolutely so much better. Um, you know, so it's very worth it. And uh, you know, even if I decide to go take a nap after this before the sun completely comes up, I will. I will be just fine. Uh, I appreciate having the opportunity to hang out with all of you guys and being able to, you know, uh, see what's going on in chat. We blew away the likes record. That makes me feel good. Um, yeah. You know, but feel free again, uh, check out the uh, trade delicious website, get on our YouTube channel, get, get after that. Some of that educational content, you got to eat your vegetables while you eat your dessert too. We always talk about that. You need a full on meal. Yeah. Uh, we want to build better retail traders and, uh, uh, whatever we could do for you guys. You know, if you got suggestions, drop them in the Discord, uh, interact with us. Uh, that's what it's there for. Uh, so uh, please, please uh, share share your thoughts with us. Uh, and you touched you, on the word vegetables, last opportunity to, last opportunity for me to feed in a little bit of fruit and veg before we finish up the stream. So traders, today is a bank holiday in the UK. Typically, we're seeing small movements in the market. If you are choosing not to trade today and you have not done your weekly review, ask yourself why there's such a growth opportunity in this. The streams are brilliant. They're enjoyable. They're fun. They're entertaining. We interact with you guys. Absolutely love it. 
at its core, are you growing as a trader? That's our mission here every single stream. And the message I want to leave you with today is if you have not done your weekly review, if you do not know what a weekly review is, ask us about it in the Discord. Take a moment to reflect on how you performed last week. See what it is you did right, what it is you did wrong, and ask yourself, is there anything I can do to make an improvement for this coming week? This is how we grow as traders. This is how we elevate. I want to, again, thank you all for being here. And I'll catch you all tomorrow. Thanks a lot. We'll see you. Cheers.